Yay Networks. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Sour Loss Sweet Lessons. I'm your host, Deshauna Barber. I'm so excited to welcome you back to another episode. As you all know, Sour Loss Sweet Lessons is all things self-care, self-love, and self-improvement. So let's dive right into today's episode, which is called Six Reasons You're at a Life Standstill. (sighs) I am really excited for this episode and it is because it is a deep rooted reflection of where I'm at in life. Like I'm at a genuine stillness moment and there is an episode, a few episodes back talking about what to do when life is still. And one thing I've been telling my husband is that I have enjoyed this stillness and I've enjoyed it because 2023 was insanity for me. (laughs) As you all know, 2023, I had the most speaking gigs I've ever had in a one year period, almost double the amount of speaking gigs I've ever spoken at in one year. I was planning a wedding. I was writing a book. I was launching this amazing podcast. I was transitioning out of my full-time nonprofit position because of how busy my plate was. And I was still content creating. So, and I was a newlywed. So I was getting used to my wifely duties, right? So it was a year in which I prayed to the heavens for a break and the heavens listened because 2024 has been a break for me and it has truly been a reset button where I have had the opportunity to be still and even in a way allow my brain to empty itself. I don't know if you all know what it feels like to like have a very empty brain, but it's when there's no plans. I have no plans. I have nothing to think about. There's no pressures. And in some ways, the stagnant feeling of stillness makes you feel like you're doing something wrong right? It, it, ma- it makes you feel as though, why is there nothing to do? So I have a battle in my heart and the battle is a balance between loving having nothing to do while also wondering why I have nothing to do. <laughs> and having somewhat of a deep appreciation for my ability to now relax and breathe and be calm. So I've sat with this for a while and I've thought through this and I've wondered, is this stillness or is this a life standstill? And I realized that it's stillness. But now within the next few weeks, I feel like I'm moving into a standstill moment because There are opportunities popping up where I'm going to be doing some traveling. My speaking is kicking back up. The summer is almost um, shifting and changing. So now I am at a point where I'm turning my stillness and now it's turning into a standstill. And now I need to make sure that it does not feel like a standstill. And here's the reason why it feels like a standstill. It's because I have something to do, but I don't feel creatively inspired to do it. (laughs) Does that make sense? A standstill moment is when you have obligations, but you're not inspired. And I feel as though this is all a residual effect of being still for so long. I have not had to use my, my brain at all or get in touch with my creative side. I have merely been able to sit still and not have to think about anything. And now I'm at a point where now, Deshauna, there's work coming in, there's projects coming in, there's obligations that I have, and now I'm struggling to feel inspired. So 
Now I'm trying to figure out how to get my brain to turn itself back on again and almost go back to the 2024 Deshauna and get her kicked back into, you know, work mode. And that has been somewhat of an interesting experience. And it's one of the inspirations for today's episode, which is six reasons why you're at a life standstill. Are you lacking in that creative drive? Are you lacking in that inspiration? Do you feel as though you're kind of on a hamster wheel and you're just going through the motions? We want to get ourselves out of that. One, because it's not healthy. And two, because it's not actually productive. You aren't investing into your craft. You're kind of just dealing with it, accepting it. But are you investing into it? So now I am pushing myself to get to a point where I let go of this standstill and I, I turn my, my brain back on to get into this mode. So let's dive into the very first reason why you might feel like you're at a life standstill. And I believe it's because you need a new, you need new scenery or a new creative space. For those that don't know, I film my podcast in my living room. I have a very beautiful loft apartment and it is like 20 foot high ceilings and it's a very beautiful apartment. And I'm really appreciative of having lived here for over two years now. And my husband agrees with me in this positioning that I am tired of this apartment. <laughs> Here's why. I don't have a creative space in this apartment. This is a two bedroom, one bath loft apartment. The first bedroom is my husband and I's bedroom where we sleep. The second bedroom is his office. And while I love him and I think he deserves his office because he works from home, multiple days a week, but he also goes into the office multiple days a week. I'm the person that really loves my living room. This is where I spend majority of my time in my day, but it is a common area and it is not my area. It's not my space that I have made specifically for me and for the things that I want to create when I do a get ready with me. I can't do it in this living room, right? I mean, I could, but I don't know if it necessarily fits the setting of the living room. Anytime I want to film something or if even just doing this podcast, I have to rearrange the entire living room to get it to what it needs to look like to create this podcast setting that I've created for sour loss, sweet lessons. And I'm kind of over it. <laughs> I hate having to move the couches around and move the lights and set things up and set up, you know, the mics and the lighting and all of that in the camera. I really want to get to a point where I have a space that is dedicated to my podcast and to my projects. So graceful, gratefully, we are moving in a few weeks and we are moving into a four bedroom, two bathroom apartment. Oh, I am getting worked up just thinking about it. So I am not only going to have a bathroom for myself. <laughs> you know, my husband and I will share a bathroom, of course, but that second bathroom, I'm going to be doing content. I'm going to be doing my makeup. I'm going to be leaving my makeup all over the sink, my hair products everywhere. Like I'm ready for that. But not only do I have my own bathroom, now I have a room that's going to be specifically dedicated to my creative space and to the projects that I'm excited to do. And I can't wait to decorate it and film and not have to move anything. It can sit there and I can shut the door and I can walk away and come back in a week and film in there again. That's the life that I'm ready for. And some of you might be wondering to yourselves, 
why do I feel so stagnant? Why do I feel like a standstill? And it might be because you have not dedicated a space within your living area specifically to your products and to your creative gifts. So that is my recommendation to you, even if it's a corner in the apartment, truthfully, it could even be a corner in the apartment. There was one point in which my husband and I were trying to figure out, do we need to remove his stuff and make his office the podcast room? We ended up deciding against it um, because I just don't see myself going into the room unless I'm filming, filming the podcast. With him, he's in his office all the time to study and to do his work. So it just made sense for us to keep it the way that we've already been using it. But if you are in a situation in which you need to rearrange your living situation, I say do it. Sometimes you just need a creative space and you haven't necessarily established that within your living area. So that's my first recommendation for why life might feel like it's at a standstill. The second one is, is unsupportive people. We'll keep this one short, but sometimes we might feel like we're at a standstill because of the fact that we are surrounded by individuals that don't necessarily believe in the things that we have going on. When you are surrounded by unsupportive people, that affects your mood and that affects your environment. It affects the way that you feel about your goals. So I also highly recommend making sure that you establish yourself and establish a really awesome friendship group that is constantly in support of the things that you have going on. The third one is you might be waiting for the perfect timing to activate something in your life. For myself, I was waiting for the perfect timing to launch this podcast last year. I delayed it for probably a year and a half because I was waiting on the perfect timing. When in fact, it really only translated into procrastination. So is there a creative desire that you have in your heart, something that you want to pursue? but you're dragging it out and postponing it because you're waiting on the perfect timing. I personally do not believe in the perfect timing of almost anything. And that's because there's always going to be an element of your life that you might consider to not be ready to take on something. So I always say, go for it. If 90% of everything else aligns, and the other 10% may not be the perfect timing, I say go for it. Because in truth, th there's always going to be something, right? There, there's always going to be a little bit of something happening in your life that might make you feel like, oh, you know what, let me postpone until next year. Sometimes we have desires and goals and hopes and dreams, but we're always wondering, is this the right time? And in truth, it probably never will be. There's no such thing as perfect timing when it comes to, well, there is, there, there is some level to it, but in terms of the projects and the goals that we have and the dreams that we have, I feel like there's usually something in there that's holding you back. I thought last year when I was launching the podcast, I'm like, no, I've got my wedding. I've got, I'm writing my book right now. I am content creating. I'm working for this nonprofit full time. This is not the right time, but I'm so happy I started it anyway, because I've learned so much in this process. I have experienced so much throughout this year of having this podcast. And as I continue to let it evolve and grow into something amazing or more amazing than it already is, I'm grateful that I started when I started because I really think that if I had not, I would have found another reason to procrastinate for no reason. So think about the timing and wondering, is there something that you're waiting on? The fourth one is lack of inspiration. I don't think we realize how much being inspired translates into our own gasoline to drive ourselves. Sometimes we need that inspiration. We need that push. I'll give you an example. 
I went to a conference called BeautyCon a very long time ago. <laughs> I think it was in 2018. Now, obviously, COVID hit. It might have been 2019. Was it 2019? No, I feel like it was 2018. And I sat in the audience and listened to one of my favorite, favorite creators. And her name is Jackie Ina. She is a beauty influencer. And she now has a candle company and a fragrance company. And she is just doing amazing things even in 2024. But back in either 20, I believe it was 2018, 2018 or 2019, she gave a panel discussion about how her parents, because she's Nigerian American, her parents being Nigerian were not fully sold on her career path as a YouTuber. And she talked about the struggles that she faced to be able to not necessarily prove them wrong, but to stay on the goal and stay on that road, knowing that she was dealing with parents that did not necessarily believe in her dreams. And I remember thinking to myself, this is such a beautiful example of what it means to persevere and to believe something deep within yourself that maybe others don't see. And I felt so inspired by her panel discussion that after that, I jumped straight into consistent content creation. And I jumped even heavier into stepping outside of my comfort zone and posting all of my speeches. And when I did that, I posted a particular speech and it ended up going viral back then. And I ended up gaining all these followers and getting even more speaking opportunities. But I say all that to say that I needed to hear her story and be inspired by her story for me to kind of step up a little bit. Personally, that's why I think hearing from people that inspire you is really important because them inspiring you is literal. They give you that gas that you need to just keep thriving and keep pushing and keep challenging yourself. And I needed that from her at that point in my life. And now, even today, I'm looking around for other women and men that are not necessarily content creators, but speakers and in the entertainment industry. I'm looking for that type of inspiration again, because once I step into this new apartment in a few weeks, I am going to take off. I am going to furnish this place. I'm going to design. I'm going to put it all together. And I'm excited for all the content that I'm going to be able to film in this newfound space. But I know that for me to decorate this place, I'm going to need some level of inspiration that really pushes me to see a vision and to watch this vision come to fruition so that I can have a real space to be able to utilize my creative gifts. And I just feel like my living room is not the space. Like when I see the living room, I think to myself, this is a place just to watch TV and to relax. Um, it's not in, in, it's not a space that inspires me to do anything beyond that. So I am very excited to get myself to the point where I see people around me that are inspiring me to push myself beyond where I'm at right now. And I'm just, this living room, man, I'm telling y'all. <laughs> I'm kind of, I'm ready. Like I, I'm, I'm truly ready for a new space. I really am. So anyway, if you all know anyone, put it in the comments or DM it to me. If you know anyone that has a really, really, really nice creative room, I'm looking for inspiration. The fifth one is to break your routine. I am a vacation girly. Every quarter I go on a vacation. I have not done that this year. It has been six months since I've been on a vacation. My last vacation was technically my honeymoon in December. 
And in truth, vacations have kind of been the reset button for me. But now I'm at the point where I'm kind of not able to reset and I'm not able to get a new routine and kind of break out of my everyday life. Everything is becoming very, very, very much like a revolving wheel, like that hamster wheel that I was saying, where I'm kind of going through the motions and I'm ready to get out of that. <laughs> I'm ready. So for you all, I would highly suggest that you break your routine, whether you are doing something differently each day, you're not, your days don't mirror each other. I'm at that point where I'm doing things differently each day where Tuesday is going to be different than Monday just to kind of break myself out of that hamster wheel and that that constant feeling of every day looks the same. I'm getting myself to that. And then the final one is comparison. And this one is <laughs> tough. We all deal with comparison on a daily basis. Some of us feel like we're at a standstill because we see that other people are not at a standstill. So therefore you're comparing yourself and you're saying, why is she at this thing and that thing and doing this and doing that? And her platforms are growing and her reach is growing and why, 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 why? But I'm not. That comparison is such a trap. It is a huge trap and we cannot allow ourselves to live in that trap for too long. It is human nature to compare yourself and to wonder what you're doing that this person, what a person is doing that you're not doing. That is a constant thing, but we have to break out of that because everyone's pace is very different. Everyone's life is different. Everyone's impact is different. We have to recognize that our callings are different and so are our paths and our roads. So looking at why she got this or why he got that, it is not a healthy mindset to stay in. When you see it, human nature is to respond, to think about it, but immediately as soon as you feel yourself thinking or overthinking this comparison, you have to be able to put a stop to that mindset. Maybe right now it is your time to reset, rebuild, rebrand, redirect. And whatever that looks like for you, you need to take the steps to make that happen. But never spend too much time staring off into the distance at what other people are doing. Focus on you. The best thing that you can do is not compare yourself, but to be inspired by the people around you. But all right, everyone, that close out today's episode of Sour Loss, Sweet Lessons. Thank you all so, so, so much for tuning into another episode. I want you to send this episode to five people that you believe are at a standstill, five people that you think need just somewhat of a creative boost. Send it out to five people. Hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye-bye. <music>